All right, so uh, let's get started, everyone. Uh, so first of all, thank you for coming uh, virtually, of course, uh, not physically. Uh, awkward start right there. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. My name is Hamza. Uh, I'm an instructor at Coded, and uh, I'll be your moder moderator slash uh, host for today. And uh, the person who's going to be giving you your awesome workshop is Mr. Burhan Khalid. He's going to be giving you guys an awesome workshop on Go. Um, I'm a big fan of Go. Haven't learned it yet, but uh, it's definitely pretty much very high on my, on my to learn list. So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna burn anything from what Mr. Burhan's gonna say. So I'll uh, give the mic to Mr. Burhan. But just to remind you guys, um, those who are watching through Zoom, uh, don't forget that there is a uh, Q and A box that you can um, put your questions in. Uh, if you guys like a question, upvote it. Uh, we'll have some time to answer your questions at the end of the workshop. So uh, without further ado, the mic is yours, Mr. Burhan. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, happy, happy COVID, I guess. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to give a talk about Go and uh, it's, it's programming language that uh, I think it's coming into its own in, in today's world. And a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm actually a Python developer. I've been writing Python and various other programming languages for the past um, 15 plus years. I know that's a long time. Uh, but recently, I have started uh, writing more and more code in Go, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to share with you guys uh, my experience and a little bit of background on the on the technology. So here we, <clears throat> excuse the pun, Go, right? So I uh, hope you guys can uh, see my screen. So Go is a programming language um, developed at Google. Uh, so the motto for Go is do less and enable more. Uh, it's, that's the logo. So, like I was saying, Go uh, is uh, so. I, why should you learn Go? So, first of all, it was uh, created at Google um, by what I, I like to call the giants of computing, or like people that had a great influence on computer technology as a whole. So, if if you don't recognize some of the names, I'm sure some of you guys do. Uh, Rob Pike and Ken Thompson, they were part of uh, the, uh, Berkeley Labs and they were involved in creating Unix. And Robert uh, Griesemer, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he also is a pioneer of computing and uh, he was involved in UTF-8. Um, so Google uh, solves one of the, some of the largest technical problems in the world. And uh, they realized that the problems that they were solving using traditional programming languages, uh, C, C++, um, Java even, uh, they were not really designed to take advantage of modern infrastructure and modern hardware which includes uh, multi-core uh, multi CPUs, uh, multiple cores, multiple CPUs, a lot of parallelization. Not to say that you cannot do that in these languages, but it requires a lot of um, high-level uh, understanding of the core semantics of how threads and processors and synchronization work. So in Google being Google, uh, and being that the fact that they have a bunch of engineers working, they decided to solve the problem uh, by creating a language. So uh, the, the, the stated goal of Go is to make, uh, to take advantage of the multi-CPU, multi-core architecture that uh, is available in today's world. And at the same time, uh, allow um, ease of programming. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get into some of the details on, on, on how they managed to do that. So uh, just a bit of a background on why, why you should, um, uh, use Go. So it's designed for the ease of programming. And uh, by that, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't try to get in your way a lot um, when you're trying to uh, write code. At the same time, it has a bit of a friendly syntax. Uh, coming as a Python developer, I appreciate the fact that there are no semicolons in Go, but then I cringe at the fact that there are curly braces in Go. Uh, it has a concise, deliberate, and clean syntax. Uh, threads are cheap, uh, fast, and easy. Pick any of the three. They're all true for Go. Uh, it's, it's portable. It's one of the few languages that I, that I can confidently say it makes it very easy to write code in one computer, uh, uh, in one architecture, and easily, easily, easily port it without doing a lot of uh, gymnastics, uh, if I can say that, uh, to another architecture. And hopefully, we'll, we'll get to that in today's demo. 
Uh, it has uh, first-class tooling support. So out of the box, when you download and you install Go, it comes with a lot of tools that help you write uh, code and they help you kind of guide, guide you through Go, uh, Go best practices. Um, it has a powerful type system, uh, but unlike uh, some of the other languages that you may be familiar with, it, it's not object-oriented language. So there's, there's no concept of classes and objects. It has a comprehensive standard library uh, and the standard library is very compact, uh, which is also nice. Uh, of course, it's open source, which, uh, which is great because anyone can go in and, and take a look under the hood, see how Go is developed. But more importantly, uh, they have an open community where you can go and you can ask uh, questions of Go and of the Go creators and suggest features. And they have a, uh, they have a very nice community process around that. And uh, one thing that I personally like about Go is, is that it doesn't chase features. So some languages try to add uh, whatever the latest uh, fad uh, uh, is within their framework, but Go uh, kind of tries to stay away from that. For example, one of the famous things about Go is that it doesn't have generics. Although uh, recently there, there, there is a proposal to add generics, which is being taken up. But um, by and large, uh, it, it's, it's not trying to go uh, and, and, you know, include every, every feature under the sun in the language. So this is, um, uh, oops, I think I may have skipped a couple of slides. So let me just go back, okay, yeah. So this is the post that started Go, that introduced Go uh, to the world. And you can see it's uh, November 10th, 2009, um, but actually uh, Go version one was released in 2012. So this is how, um, the Go team uh, described Go, and, and I'm just gonna uh, read it real quick. And it says that uh, the key thing is Go combines the development speed and, of working in a dynamic language like Python with the performance of safe, uh, with the performance and safety of a compiled language like C or C++. So typically, uh, in in languages that are dynamic uh, like Python, you the, you don't have types, um, so uh, you, you just have objects that can be of any types, and types are inferred. Uh, during runtime, time, that can cause, uh, it's great for developer productivity because you can get started really quickly, but then when it comes to writing serious code, it, it can lead to some bugs that are, that are difficult to chase down. So that, that, that was kind of like the purpose of Go. And then uh, along came um, uh, Ryan Dahl, who is the creator of Node.js. And of course, Node.js is, is a famous uh, framework for writing servers. And he realized that uh, unlike, um, node go had the right paradigm uh, when it comes to uh, doing server programming so this is a this is from this blog post uh, uh, interview to, uh, with ryan and i the reason i added this in is because it, it, it's really amazing how a lot of specific um, server and systems development people are now moving to go uh, it's it's simply that uh, that good at, at what it does so uh, i'm going to show you a, a chart here this is from the gocon tokyo talk uh, it's held in uh, 31st of May by Brad uh, Fitzpatrick. And so here's a nice chart. It, it compares uh, common programming languages. And uh, on the y-axis, it's what are programming languages that are fast and fun for humans to write in. So of course, you have Ruby here. You have Python here. I don't know why Perl is here, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave that alone. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. And fast and efficient for computers, we have C, we have C++, we have Java. And of course, we have Go, which kind of sits um, in the middle here, right? So this is how you can see where Go is. So before Go came along, there was there was no language that was really in this in this zone right here. Um, however, when we talk about writing concurrent code uh, or uh, parallel code, here is the the status. So when you when you have languages that are very good at writing very efficient concurrent code, you have C, obviously, C++, and Java all the way out here. But then the common languages that you may be familiar with, they're really not that efficient at writing concurrent code. So we have JavaScript, we have Perl, we have Python, we have Ruby all the way down here. And of course, uh, this is really nice. So uh, what, in, in which languages is, is it more fun to write code? So obviously, it's a lot it's, it's very easy and it's very easy to write code in Python, but it's very difficult to write good concurrent code in Python. Um, Go, on the other hand, sits right up top. So it, it has a great combination of a clear and concise syntax and first class and very, very simple uh, support for uh, concurrency and parallel, uh, parallelism. So that's a little bit. But this presentation used to a bunch of logos. Um, so here is my, um, oops, 
here's my uh, slide with a bunch of logos. These are all the companies that uh, currently use Go, and this slide is, I mean, this logo slide is going to get uh, even better uh, uh, with a lot more logos. Um, so of course, the, the famous one that you may be familiar with is Docker. So Docker, the entire Docker ecosystem is, is written in Go. So when you download Docker, that, that entire thing uh, runs Go. Of course, Google is here, YouTube, uh, linked to Google, and then a, a lot of the companies are also adopting Go. But what, but what do they use Go for? Um, so the common use cases for Go are any and all kinds of servers, So which I think is relevant for the team that's, uh, that's going to be in this hackathon. Um, web applications, so backends for web applications, machine learning and image processing systems because of its excellent concurrency. Uh, any kind of load balancers uh, that you want, want to write, uh, system tools, of course, uh, hardware hacking, scripting, backend processing. So basically anything that runs uh, behind the scenes, it's ideal use case for Go. And uh, hopefully you'll, you, you'll see an example of that once we get to the demo part. So um, just a quick introduction to Go. So of course, Go has all of the common uh, types that you may be familiar with, integers, floats, strings, booleans, complex. Um, it has a concept of structs rather than um, classes and structs can have methods attached. Of course, functions, pointers, arrays and slices, maps, if, for, switch, basically common things that, that you might be familiar with other languages. And then they have some things that are, that are specific to Go, for example, channels, um, Go routines. Uh, and then this is actually some examples that I think you know, for the interest of time, I did not include them. But what I will do is uh, I will go ahead and I'll, I will show you guys a couple of examples. So hopefully when I click this, it should um, pop up, uh, it, which it has. And I'm going to then um, share it with you guys in a few seconds, as soon as this thing loads in my computer. And just let me know if you guys can see it. Um, on the, I think on it's the, taking some there. time to uh, load, uh, Mr. Burhan. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, these are these are public links. So what I'll do is at the end of the presentation, I'm going to share uh, the links to the samples, and um, so I'll I'll just kill that for now. Yeah, and I, then I'll just we were just the, able to see it just now. <laughs> oh, oops. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll we'll try it one more time. And if it works, that's fine. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll, we'll skip ahead and we'll, we'll go to the next slide. So let me know if you're able to see it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can see it. Okay. So this is, a, um, uh, this is what's called the, I'm gonna just increase the font. So in, in case people are not able to probably read it. So this is the Go Playground. Um, it's, a, it's an online uh, website. You can go and, uh, okay. There's a lot of Go in this Go talk, but basically uh, this is like an online interpreter for Go. So you can try out Go without having to install it. Uh, so this is basically what a Go file looks like. Every Go file starts with a statement package, which identifies the, uh, the package this file belongs to. By, by convention, uh, the, if you're writing an executable, you have to have a package main within which you have a function called main and in Go, they're called funks. So that's why it's F-U-N-C. Uh, import statements to import libraries. By the way, uh, the right way to say this is fumpt, not FMT. This I learned the hard way when talking to some Go people. And here's a typical Go syntax. Now, uh, things that may be a bit weird, uh, in, in most programming languages that at least I'm familiar with, when you want to create a declare variable, you say int uh, x equals one, uh, but in Go, uh, it's the other way around. So you say x int, right? So the, the name comes first and the type comes there. So, just gonna, so this is basically declaring some basic ints. So this is the int, a string, a float 64, a boolean complex. Um, just printing some stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly run it. Um, and then you guys can see here's the output as you may expect. These are the default values. So blank is a default value for string, zero is a default value for float and so on. So this is uh, kind of gives you an idea of what the Go syntax is all about. And here's, here's something that I really appreciate about Go. So Go has very, very opinionated syntax requirements. So for example, let's say that you, like some of my friends, like to write your code like this. However, you see this format button, it triggers the built-in formatter. Oh, that was a bad example. So let me just try this one, for example. It, it triggers the built-in formatter, which will automatically take your code and format it in the way that all Go code should be formatted. And I think that's, that speaks volumes towards how much we go creators want to make sure that you are able to 
share code and um, write code easily without having to worry about how do you do spacing, the tabs, the spaces, where do curly braces go. In fact, um, uh, the, uh, I'll show you later on in the demo some, some more examples of how they enforce their, um, their, their, their style guides, which, which honestly I, I appreciate. It takes away from some of your cognitive load on having to decide things. So basically if the Go formatter passes your code, then chances are other people will also be able to understand it. So um, that's that's really nice uh, on on how they did that. So uh, so so that was integers, floats, and starts. Let me see if I can now. Um, oops. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop uh, sharing the screen, um, and let me just see if that will fix it because. I think you guys cannot see my presentation anymore. So just give me a second while I while I fix this. I apologize for that. Uh, and I will see if I can quickly um, bring it back up. And you should be able to see it now again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna assume that you are you guys are able to see my screen. So the, ne the next thing I wanna talk about is structs. The, this is one of the more uh, complicated parts of Go. So as you can see, all the links are links to the Golang playground. So I'll share these later so you guys can go look at it. So struct is basically the most complex thing. Struct allows you to create custom types. So here I'm declaring a type of human, which is a struct. It has two fields. Here I create a, uh, create a, uh, create a variable of that type. And then I go ahead and do some common functions to it. So let's just run this real quick, see what that looks like. So here we go. This is what our uh, default struct looks like. And if you pass this formatting parameter, it actually gives you the fields and their values in the struct. Here I declare the members of the struct to some strings. I print those and it prints it like this and so on and so forth. So very simple, uh, clear syntax. I really appreciate the fact it's very concise, but um, here's some of the cool things you can do with uh, struct. So when you create a custom type like this, this is a human, it's a custom type. You can attach methods to it, right? So this is a method that listens on a pointer of, of type human, which is H, and then it says speak and it returns this. So when we run this, we get the normal output, which is this. And then we get the verbose output, which is here. And finally, when I say I am speak, you get this, right? This is the, the, the result of that uh, string. So um, this, is, this is how you can define your own custom behaviors and go by attaching uh, methods uh, to structs. And structs can also enforce interfaces. So, uh, but uh, again, um, it's, this is not really, a, a, there's a lot more to go. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot more to go than this. So what I'm gonna do really quickly now is I'm going to go ahead and, and um, give you guys a demo. So I thought long and hard of what demo to give you. And since this is a hackathon, I presume that everyone is going to be writing some web code. So why not show you guys how to create an API backend in Go um, very quickly, all right? So this is, a, this is a Visual Studio code. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Um, and what I've done is I've just created a directory called hackathon and it's, it's an empty directory, there are no files here. So we're gonna, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna create an API backend uh, really quickly. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing you have to, you, you, you have to do is just uh, type uh, go mod uh, init. And this is like initialize this directory to pull in other code. So I'm just gonna give it uh, any, let's say go, And that creates this nice little Go file. And now you can just start writing code. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write main.go. So of course, um, this is the, um, the, the, the first file because then the first line, because it's the only file, it's package main, right? And then uh, let's, let's start. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an API for a bookstore. Obviously that's, that's really not useful, but the point here is just you guys just to show you guys how easy it is to write backend servers in Go. So within the, the next like 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create a complete API. So the first thing is we're gonna, we're gonna define our book, right? So this is how I'm gonna type real fast. So this is a book, 
it's a it's a it's a custom type. It's a struct. It has an ID, which is an unsigned integer. Now here's something cool. So when you do this, which is an uh, it it tells Go that whenever I convert this type to a JSON, give this value to this uh, member of the struct. So it's that simple to basically do JSON import and export um, in GoLang. So I'll explain what this Go R and this Go RM is this, this Go RM, uh, later. But this is basically how we're going to store this. This is going to be the primary key in the database. But then you have the title and the author. So this is the book, right? And uh, since we have a book, let's just uh, start by just uh, creating, we, we, we need a database, right? So we'll go here and we will say, give me a database. So GORM is a, it's, it's an object, it's called an object relation manager, but that's just a misnomer. And since Go, we don't have really have objects, but uh, this is creating a pointer uh, to the DB here. And let's just start writing our, our main, uh, oh, oops, our main function that's going to be running the, the show. So the first thing we're gonna do uh, in our main function um, is we're going to start our server, our web server. So that is this line as simple as this. Uh, Jin is a, uh, is a library in Go that helps you write server backend code. So that's just kind of to help you speed things up. Now, the reason this is all squiggly underlined is because it's an undeclared name. I haven't imported anything yet, but I'll get to that in a second. So I'm just gonna say this, basically it starts my server. And finally, I'm going to just write this piece of code, which runs my server, right? But before I start with my server, let me um, just create my database. So because this is a a demo, I'm not going to connect to an actual database. What I'll do is I'll just create a function um, that uses uh, an SQLite, which is a file-based database, my current directory, right? And this is basically a connect function. Obviously, once I start, I'm just going to um, call to connect to my database, right? So far, so good. We have a function, but we just need to create the tables that represent this, uh, this uh, object in the database. Uh, to do that, we have this line here called auto migrate and we pass it a pointer of a book type. So what, what, this is, what this line is basically saying is that take these uh, members of this struct and automatically create a database table um, to represent them and then set the value of the DB to be the database that's created here. Simple, right? I know you guys are thinking like, well, that's a lot. Uh, but as soon as I hit save in Visual Studio because uh, in Visual Studio Code, because I have the Go uh, extension enabled, it automatically pulls in my import statements. So that will kind of help. And what is this quick line saying? Undeclared name. Okay, that's that's easy because I have this Go RM here. But a little thing that I have to do, so this is one of the things that I really like. It's a bit of a hack. Well, it's not a hack, but what we do is in Go, when we're, when we're trying to talk databases, we have to import the driver here so that it, it doesn't, um, it, it binds the ORM to that driver. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna import this line. This means that import this statement, but ignore its, uh, its uh, the, the packages that you're gonna import here. So that's there. So I, I know I'm going a little bit fast, but I'll, uh, the, the reason I'm going fast is because I wanna save some time um, for questions. So obviously the first thing we want to do when we uh, start is we want to create a book. So let me just really quickly write a function to create a book. There's a function to create a book. It takes um, a create book input uh, type, which is basically a structure uh, it's, it's another type and it enforces, it enforces uh, some bindings. It says that when you send me a JSON object to create a book, I'm expecting to have a title and an author. If the title and author are not there, it will return an automatic error, right? So that's, that's for create. And since this is a squiggly line, it's saying that undeclared name, if I just save, it will go ahead and import the net library there for me. All right, so this is a create book input type. And next we want to update, obviously. So we're gonna 
I'm, I'm just going to really quickly, in the interest of time, uh, write the uh, write. Well, I only wrote it, but just copy paste the rest of the code, and then I'll, I'll I'll walk you guys through it. So here we go. So this is to delete books. This is to find a book. This is to find books, and this is to find an in, an individual book. And finally, what we're going to do down here is we're just going to wire all these up. So. There we go. So when I send a get request to books, run find books. When I send a post request to book, create a book. When I do a get for a specific book, find that one specific book. When I send a patch, we want, we want to update a book. And of course, when I send delete, I want to delete. So it's um, saying that the update book is under a squig line, probably because I don't have that function. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that here. All right, so I'm in, let me save this really quickly. It has saved and I'm going to also create the various other structs that are missing. So this is an update book input, similar to how I have the um, create book input. I want another structure here to identify what I'm expecting when I update a book. That should take care of that. And now the fun part, is to run this, run this all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say go build down here. Uh, main go. <clears throat> Oops, that's not going to work. Right. Uh, because this is it's Go and not Python, I have to wait for it to compile. Um, but it's it's very it's very quick. You can see it's finding the modules that's. Uh, that uh, I declared in my code. It's going to fetch those in, it's going to download them, um, and eventually it's going to uh, start. Uh, it's, it's, going to go, it's going to give me an executable here because I'm running on Windows. So as soon as it's done, you'll see a main.exe file here. And that's one of the things I like about Go while this is going on in the background, is that uh, it, it really, is, is a case of you write code once and then uh, it creates binaries that are self-contained. So you can ship them and not have to worry about having dependencies on the other side. So if I have, uh, I'm building this on Windows. So when, when it's done building that exe file, I'll just ship it to any Windows computer and I don't have to worry about uh, imports or dependencies or DLLs or libraries. That, that binary is self-contained and it, it will run straight out of the box without any modifications. Um, similarly, I am on Windows. There we go. So main AXE is done. Um, I am on Windows and I can also uh, build from Windows the binary for Linux. But before I get to that, let me just run this and see what it does. So I have main.exe and my server is running now. As you can see, um, I have these endpoints. It's running on port 8080. So let's just, um, let's just try it out. Right, so I'm gonna minimize this so you guys can see it. Um, and I'm gonna reduce the zoom of it as well. So I'm just gonna call it. So uh, right, if I do that, um, it should return, any guesses? Ah, a 404, right? Because this, this URL is not mapped to any endpoint. But if I do books, I should get an empty set because I don't have any books in the database, right? But let's let's go ahead and add a book. So I'm going to um, books and title is uh, hackathon and author is everyone. And I get the result, right? I have a book with an ID of one, um, and here's my server, it's giving me a 200. And just to confirm, I can just go ahead and uh, fetch that book, right? Books, oh, let's, let's just see books, what that gives. That gives, uh, oh, and a file. Mm, ah, because it's a create book. So let me just do book of, uh, books of one. That should give me, ah, uh, 404, ah, oh, yes, of course because it's a patch. So uh, because I'm doing a post right here. I'm glad you guys are not on mic because I'm sure someone would have caught that. 
and there we go. So that returns uh, the book that I just uh, created a couple of seconds ago. Uh, so uh, that's that, that, that should give you an idea that within, I think maybe 15, 20 minutes, I'm gonna uh, stop the, the screen share. Uh, within a couple of minutes, I was able to uh, create a, a server um, with a complete uh, RESTful API and uh, quickly test it out, which is kind of um, really what, what you guys will have to be, uh, what, what you'll be doing uh, during the hackathon. Um, so um, it, it's, I, th I, th I thought it was a great example uh, to showcase how quickly you could get things up and running uh, with the backend. Um, and I have some other uh, tips for you guys as well. Uh, so uh, the documentation for Go is very detailed. Uh, it's, it's, it's written, unfortunately, by people who are very good at programming and not so good at writing documentation. So don't be discouraged if you don't understand everything that's in the document. Um, you need to kind of take your time to go through it. And these are the two books that I, I refer to uh, most often when I'm writing uh, Go code. Um, this one on the bottom, uh, this is, uh, so um, fun fact, I like to rank my books by the number of coffees it takes me to read them and the kind of coffee uh, that I like. So the Go programming language, the blue one here, uh, this is a um, double espresso and four cups of that to get through this. The one on top is more like a vanilla latte, right? With perhaps some caramel on top, if you like it. It's a very lightweight book. It's very easy to get started. This is more of like the reference book for Go. There are also some excellent resources online. You can go to these websites. There's the Golang book, uh, which is a introduction to Go. Go by example is really good. Um, it, it shows you simple things in Go and uh, simple concepts are written in Go. Of course, the Go playground, which is right here. Uh, Go Play Space is, is another uh, playground, and Go Doc is the documentation reference for libraries in Go. Uh, in addition, just uh, today I thought I'd add this slide. Um, there are some other resources that you guys can use. Um, so Just for Funk is a YouTube channel by um, Francis Campo. That's his Twitter handle. I think I said that right. I, I hope so. Um, it's an excellent resource of, of, of videos, and, and Francis does a great job of introducing and explaining concepts in Go. I highly recommend um, if you just want to see someone write Go code and explain how it's done a lot better than, than what I could, um, it's, it's, it's a great resource. Uh, GoTime FM is a podcast around Go and uh, Go and, uh, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, I listen to it um, every now and then. They have a weekly show. And it's really good to kind of understand uh, some of the more um, common things that, that how Go is being used in the wild and where it makes sense. And they also talk a lot about um, general software engineering uh, practices, so it's, so it's really good. Um, Go for Guides is, is a great web, uh, is, is a great website um, if you want to just learn uh, more about uh, Go resources as uh, towards more of a guided tutorial format. And of course, there's a official a Slack channel. Um, you can go to this link and um, get invited to the Slack channel. I'm there as well, asking some very basic questions and. Um, there are, there's a newbies channel uh, on that Slack with uh, people who help a lot. And um, it's a great resource if you just need some more interactive uh, live help. Um, uh, that's it from me. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I realize um, it was a bit of a rushed uh, talk, but I wanted to give some time at the end um, for, for question and answers. But before I go, um, uh, I'm available on, on, on Twitter and GitHub at Burhan, uh, and uh, that's my website. And you can always email me at burhan at hey.com. Um, uh, these icons that you see, um, oh, uh, fun fact. I also chose Go because I really like the mascot. It's really cute. I like it. Uh, these were created by uh, Ashley McNamara, uh, and the, the original one was created by Rene French. You can also create your own version uh, at this website called Me, which is also <laughs> written in Go. And that, uh, there's a lot of combinations of, of gophers you can create with uh, cute little you know, glasses and mustache and, and those things. Um, so really fun. Uh, final tip, uh, if, you, if, you, if you'd like to learn more about Go, I'm always available. I'm, I'm putting together a proper uh, full day uh, workshop on Go. It's going to be free. Um, don't, so, 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 uh, don't worry about that, uh, about that part. And if, if there's interest, just hit me up on, on Twitter or just email me. I, I don't uh, promise I won't spam anyone.
but I just want to see how many people are interested, what, what format makes sense for them so that uh, hopefully we can get that uh, started. Um, so uh, that's it from me. Uh, I'm going to stop my screen share now and uh, open, uh, open the floor to questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Burhan. Uh, so guys, feel free to put your questions into the Q&A area. Uh, I think I'll just start things off with a question. Um, so Burhan, since uh, you're a Python slash Go developer, um, when do you decide to either use Python or Go? Uh, how do you Very decide? good question. Um, yeah. So uh, I use Go whenever I'm writing backend. So whenever I'm writing an API server, when I'm writing something that has to, that doesn't really have a, a UI for humans, that has a UI for computers, I prefer to use Go simply because it's really easy to deploy. Um, you get a binary. I didn't get a chance to showcase it, but you can easily on Windows create a binary for Linux and then ship that. And you don't have to worry about, unlike with Python, you don't have to worry about requirements files and make sure the right version of the Python interpreter is there. Uh, it makes things a lot simpler. And um, uh, I've also found that performance with Go is, 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 um, is, is huge uh, uh, because it, it's very easy to take advantage of all the cores uh, that are available to you. So uh, any kind of background process you can offload for which you would normally use Celery or something like that. With Go, it's a lot, lot simpler to get started. And it just, uh, it, it, it makes a, a huge difference in, in performance. Uh, I, I actually have a comparison that I did uh, where I had an existing Python application that was a backend server, an, an API server, and I converted it to Go because I had a, it was a very good way for me to match like to like. And uh, it, that system had some specific constraints. So it had to process the input within a certain time period uh, because that was a constraint from the, from the incoming side for performance reasons. Yeah. And, and in Python, I had, that, I, I had it down to like less than like, uh, so, the, so the time window was two minutes. I had it down to a minute and 20 seconds uh, on makes... average. Uh, but then with Go, I had it down to microseconds, which was, <laughs> okay. really, which was really crazy. I, I honestly, I, I didn't believe it. I, I thought it had crashed. I, I thought it was not running well. Um, and of course I did a whole bunch of other optimizations. I stopped using files and I did some tweaks on the DB side, but, and then the code, you know, Go has some weird things that will annoy you as a Python developer. Like you can't have variables that you're not using. Compiler will yeah. complain. Uh, there's no uh, REPL, so there's no quick way to just type Python and start working. So there's no, I mean, the, the Go playground is there, but it has its limitations. So there are some challenges uh, with it. Um, one, one of the really weird things about it is if you write something in Go and you write a comment, the linter will actually tell you how to phrase your comment. So you say, hey, put the name first and then put a verb. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, that's very interesting. It's, it's, it's that detailed. Um, if, if there's time, I, I, I can show it to you. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, some things like that really uh, at first they're annoying, but then you realize it's taking away a lot of the manual, the mental, sorry, uh, the mental workload you'd have to do if there weren't that many rules. It's like, you know, it's already, the decisions are already made, just move on and, and you know, or, or write your code. So um, I, I hope that answers your question. Uh, did, definitely did. Um, I guess uh, we'll ask one more question and then uh, we'll go to our next workshop. Uh, and that question is, uh, have you ever had the chance to, or have you ever needed to use, uh, let's say Python and Go together into one service? And what was that, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so um, I've, uh, I've migrated some code that was written in Python to Go on an existing service that was already having the front end written in Python. So um, the front end and the, um, the, the, human, the human backend was written in, in Python and Django. But then the services, um, the API calls were then migrated from Python to Go simply because it was a lot easier to um, scale those out and, and, and monitor and, and, and have those run a bit more efficiently. So I, I, have, I, have, I have done those and it's just, it's because uh, a Go uh, exposes it itself as a, just a server. So if you're using something uh, like um, anything that uses a backend. So if you're calling a web service and the web service is in Python, it's very easy to just simply, uh, you know, incrementally add Go to your application by simply taking one specific endpoint, um, writing that in Go. And if you have good, if you have tests, you can very easily test your implementation that it works. 
and then start replacing it incrementally. Right. That's what I would recommend rather than doing a wholesale, um, like take something big and major, convert it to Go. And then because you'll have that overhead of trying to make sure that the, the version written in Go as well. And then, you know, not um, having that as a critical part of your application, that might also cause you some anxiety. So my recommendation is start um, start with small backend services. Um, things that you use the most frequently uh, are probably the best targets to, to migrate. Um, anyway, because those are the those are the ones for where you would get the most um, benefit of uh, of an optimized uh, runtime and uh, of a how can I say of a specialist version of that of that application. Amazing! Thank you so much, Burhan. Uh, so thank, thank you, you for your time. Uh, if you guys have any questions for Mr. Burhan, uh, you guys have his Twitter handle. You can go and bug him on there. <laughs> uh, direct all your questions to yeah. him. And, uh, I'll also be on the well. yeah. I, I'll also be on the Discord uh, uh, chat uh, available if anyone has any uh, questions uh, on there. Uh, so again, guys, please stick around for our next workshop, which is by the uh, product designer of the first ever BlackBerry. Uh, if any of you guys are old enough to remember that. Uh, so yeah, see you in the next workshop, and thank you guys for watching.